Hello, welcome to QUT News. Hello. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has hired schools reformer David Gonski for a new review and proposed a 75% hike on funding over a decade. But Labor's slammed the deal as a smoke and mirrors trick for Australian schools. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull says the proposed funding is fair, needs-based and consistent, with hopes of lifting the education standards. Australians should be winners. We should be at the top of the class. That is our commitment. Under the deal, federal funding for schools will grow yeah. from $17.5 billion in 2017 to $30.6 billion in 2027. The plan means more than 9,000 schools across the nation should benefit but funding would be a cut to 24 of the country's wealthiest schools, while more than 300 will be worse off over time. Opposition education spokeswoman Tanya Plibersek has slammed the proposed changes. That's the equivalent of sacking 22,000 teachers. It's the equivalent of taking $2.4 million out of every school in Australia. And Catholic schools say they are being targeted by the funding cuts. Fees are in, say, 1,000 or 2,000. And we could be looking at having to double those if the government follows through on this plan. Mr Turnbull has dismissed the criticism, saying the Labor government's original plan would have taken more than 150 years to be effective. Without Labor's backing, Mr Turnbull will rely on the Green support to pass the plan through Senate. We'll wait till we see the detail, but we will uh, certainly engage in this co uh, negotiation in good faith. Rene Bourgeau, QT News. Police are questioning a number of students at a Gold Coast high school after a bomb threat set the school into lockdown. They say criminal charges could be laid. Palm Beach Corumban State High School is one of Queensland's largest. Twice on Wednesday morning, it went into emergency lockdown. A suspicious package of white powder was found outside the school gate with an envelope reading, enjoy the bomb. Soon after, Emergency authorities identified the substance as flour and the school was reopened. Then, a second threat using the smartphone airdrop system and a second lockdown. Students were kept in the school hall before officers again declared the area safe. Annalise Panisi, QT News. With one week to the federal budget, Queensland is upping the pressure. They want Canberra to support Brisbane's Cross River Rail Link, demanding proper cost sharing for the huge infrastructure project. The Palaszczuk government has committed $850 million to the Rail Link and is calling on Malcolm Turnbull to at least match their funding. The Shadow Minister for Infrastructure agrees, saying South East Queenslanders are not demanding anything more than what they're entitled to. That's why this project must be in next week's budget are brought down by Scott Morrison and Malcolm Turnbull if the government is to have a shred of credibility. The Treasurer Scott Morrison and Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull have hinted that the budget will address major projects in this state. We are putting an enormous amount of resources into infrastructure uh, in, uh, in Queensland. Mr Turnbull says it is up to the Queensland government to prove the project would be good debt. If it goes ahead, the 10-kilometre project will link Dutton Park to Bowen Hills through the CBD. The benefits of Cross River Rail are a no-brainer. For Brisbane in the 21st century, we need more than one rail crossing for our booming population. The reality is if we don't have enough funding from both levels of government, this is just a pipe dream. We're not going to see this uh, piece of infrastructure which is highly needed in Brisbane to get uh, our congestion levels down. The Merivale Bridge remains Brisbane's only cross river rail link. Built nearly 40 years ago, all parties agree that the growing city is in desperate need of a second crossing. All will be revealed on Tuesday night. Emily Cooner, QUT News. The Cancer Council wants a ban on smoking in CBD green spaces. Brisbane's Lord Mayor won't commit to the move, saying Council has to monitor current smoke-free laws. Since late last year, smoking in many public places in Brisbane CBD has been prohibited. Now, the Cancer Council is calling for the ban to be extended to the so-called ashtrays of the city, King George Square and Anzac Square. We live in a beautiful environment here in Queensland, so we should be making the most of it in, in fresh, clean, healthy air. But the Lord Mayor believes the openness of the squares sets them apart from existing legislation. You've got 26 million visitations in that mall, it's in a confined space, so 
I think King George Square is a much more open arrangement and uh, so that, that's, that's what the view I would have at the moment. Tough anti-smoking laws introduced late last year have widespread public support. I don't smoke in these sorts of areas and maybe smokers should go where there's less public people. It's, it's fine. I think, yeah, less smoking in public, the better. Around 12% of Queenslanders smoke daily. Ten years ago, this figure was at 20%. And with the majority of smokers wanting to quit, this number is set to drop even further. Almost 4,000 Queenslanders die from tobacco-related diseases each year, with at least one death a week caused by secondhand smoke. Harrison Bain, QUT News. Fire ants are continuing their relentless invasion of Brisbane. Now local residents are being urged to help eradicate the pest. First detected 16 years ago, the fire ants have now been spotted in Fairfield, Holland Park West and St Lucia. Biosecurity Queensland officers have destroyed the one nest in each suburb and inspected surrounding areas. However, residents and businesses are urged to be on the lookout and report any more sightings. Community engagement, the community assistance is very, very important. About 70% of all new fines that we get within the program come from the public. It's our communities that are affected and you know if uh, people aren't looking for fire ants as well as the you know the staff then it, the job becomes so much bigger. The South American species are capable of flying up to five kilometres and it's vital they're contained. Although they may be small fire ants have the potential to kill. If they spread throughout Australia it could cost the economy at least $1.6 billion a year. If you notice any fire ants, you're urged to call the Biosecurity Queensland hotline on 13 25 23. Kayla Marchant, QUT News. Special speed warning signs introduced three years ago around Brisbane are being hailed a success. They were designed to raise awareness about speeding in suburban streets. Drivers get either a green smiley face or a red expression of disapproval urging them to slow down. 100 million vehicles have been monitored over the past three years since the first sign was installed. Where we now have 75 signs which go up. They're portable signs, they're solar powered signs and these signs reflect speeding in particular precincts. The signs caught one in five drivers speeding but 40% reduced their speed to below the limit as a result. Local councillors nominate locations for the signs where they stay for at least a month. Each one has the ability to tell what the speed is, but it also gathers information about how many vehicles pass it, what speeds they go at, and we use that information to determine whether they're effective. The signs are often placed in dangerous locations, like school zones. It's nice to have that peace of mind that at least motorists are being reminded to be watchful of our children. Brisbane City Council have invested $5.7 million into the program and the 75 sites have rotated across 416 locations in Brisbane suburbs. And now each year we invest uh, around $800,000 to allow councillors to move the locations in accordance again with the community driven demands. Making Brisbane streets safer. Maudie Veltima, QT News. A popular Melbourne go-kart complex has been gutted by fire, destroying numerous game machines, party rooms and activities. More than 60 firefighters worked until the early hours of the morning trying to contain the blaze, but were held back by the centre's laser tag obstacle course. Very difficult because we didn't actually know what we were facing. Of course, there was a high degree of smoke in the area. No one was injured in the blaze. Firefighters are yet to determine the cause. Recapping our main story, schools reformer David Gonski has been hired again to review Australian schools. At the same time, Canberra's looking at slashing education funding by 75%. And still ahead, what raised the red flag over an Aussie's trip to Colombia? Continuing with QT News, new information has emerged about an Australian accused of smuggling drugs in Colombia. Suspicion was raised about Cassandra Sainsbury even before she arrived in the South American country. It's coming up to one month since Sainsbury's arrest and imprisonment in Albuan, past a women's jail. 
Americans Drug Enforcement Agency tipped off Colombian authorities in an email containing the 22-year-old's name, passport number and photo. The DEA became suspicious when a plane ticket was purchased in her name in Hong Kong. One week later, airport security at Bogota Airport allegedly found almost six kilos of cocaine hidden in 18 headphone boxes in Cassandra's suitcase. She maintains her innocence. No porque nosotros el trabajo. They have to do all the investigation to get the right person. Julie Bishop urges other Australians to learn from this. It is a stark reminder that when you leave Australia, you are subject to the laws of the country that you're visiting. Lawyers for the Australian are negotiating a plea deal, hoping she will get a sentence of less than two years. Jenny Archdell, QUT News. There are graphic images coming from the Middle East after Islamic State killed dozens of people in Syria. The attack happened in an area held by US-backed Syrian Democratic Forces. At least 46 people have been killed and dozens more injured after suicide bombers attacked a refugee camp in northeast Syria. This man says there were nearly 200 people at Rayim al Salabi, the location of a checkpoint and refugee camp near the Iraqi border. Refugees were slaughtered in their tents when jihadists carried out the attack in the early hours of the morning. This man says people on the border tried to alert them that Islamic State was attacking. But for many, the news came too late. This boy is one of dozens receiving urgent medical treatment after he was shot at by an Islamic State fighter who is armed with a Russian weapon. Annalise Panisi, QT News. American President Donald Trump and Russian leader Vladimir Putin have discussed working together to end violence in Syria. It's their first phone call since the US sent airstrikes to the war-torn country. The US Secretary of State confirmed the two presidents spoke and reportedly agreed that all parties must do everything they can to end violence in Syria. Well, it was a very constructive call that the two presidents had. Very, very fulsome call, a lot of detailed exchanges, so we'll see where we go from here. But former US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has spoken out against President Trump's attitude toward foreign affairs. In her first interview since last year's election, Ms Clinton said the president should be more careful about his use of armed forces. That is a necessary tool, but it should be only one of three. And diplomacy and development should be the first efforts. She also expressed concern over President Trump's seemingly close relationship with Putin during last year's election campaign. He certainly uh, <laughs> interfered in our election. And it was clear he interfered to hurt me and to help my opponent. Meanwhile, President Putin has again denied any interference in American politics at a meeting with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The Russian president says the alleged electoral hacking cannot be confirmed. Melissa McKay, QUT News. British Prime Minister Theresa May is defending her leadership after criticism from the European Commission president. Jean-Claude Juncker expressed his concern over the PM's handling of Brexit. Theresa May brushed off the comments, repeating a line used during the Conservative Party leadership campaign. I was described by one of me, my colleagues as a bloody difficult woman. Um, and I said at the time, the next person to find that out will be Jean-Claude Juncker. After meeting locals in a Cornish village, she then dismissed the doubt expressed by Juncker in relation to Brexit. I don't recall the uh, account that has been given of the uh, meeting that took place. I think a lot of this is Brussels gossip. The future of Britain was at the forefront of May's agenda, as she focused on more pressing issues such as the polls. The only poll that counts is the one that takes place on the 8th of June. The upcoming election will focus on the exit from the European Union, with Theresa May reiterating the Conservative Party's determination to strengthen the economy and take back control of the borders. Renee Bourgeau, QUT News. Six photographers and journalists have appeared in court over topless pictures of the Duchess of Cambridge published in 2012. But lawyers say they expect the case to be dismissed. The Duke and Duchess were holidaying on a private residence in the French region of Luberon five years ago when photographers armed with long lens cameras snapped pictures of Catherine sunbathing topless. 
Journalists and photographers from three publications are under fire for the alleged breach of privacy. But speaking outside the courtroom, lawyers say they believe the matter has just been blown out of proportion. This lawyer for Closer magazine says the article pleased everyone who read it. And despite what the royal family say, it was an extremely flattering representation of the couple. One of the photographers being tried told the court she didn't know the royal couple were on private property when she took the pictures. The royal family launched legal action back in September 2012, as soon as the pictures were published. Buckingham Palace released statements at the time, calling the ordeal a grotesque and shocking invasion of privacy. Melissa McKay, QUT News. Far-right French presidential candidate Marine Le Pen is being accused of plagiarism by lifting a word-for-word -word portion of her conservative rival Francois Fillon's speech. She owned up to it, claiming the very small section of an hour-plus speech was a nod to her rival. It certainly won over Fillon's supporters. He was knocked out of the first round of voting. New Zealand's National Party appears to have lost itself in the music for a 2014 election campaign ad. The party's now being sued for infringing an Eminem copyright. There aren't many people that don't recognise the iconic riff to Eminem's Lose Yourself. But the New Zealand National Party are now in court for their use of a strikingly similar track aptly titled Eminem-esque. Eminem-esque is a blatant ripoff of the original composition of Lose Yourself. I consider that the advert as a whole is unoriginal and I do not care for it. Jeff Bass says political parties and candidates have approached them multiple times, requesting permission to utilise Lose Yourself, but they have never allowed it. We do not want to risk damaging the integrity of Lose Yourself through its association with politics or a particular political party or candidate. The National Party is refusing to comment while the case is in court. Jenny Archdell, QUT News. A surfer has survived 32 hours alone in the Irish Sea after being swept 20 kilometres off the west coast of Scotland. Rescuers are being praised and say they're hopeful the man will make a full recovery. This is the moment British Coast Guards made the plunge into the freezing cold waters in an attempt to save a young man's life. Rescuers said his thick-cut wetsuit and surfboard used as a buoyancy aid helped to fight water temperatures as low as 9 degrees Celsius. Obviously, you know, being out overnight and, you know, all of the, that following day uh, in the water, um, he, he was in surprisingly good condition. Uh, he was a very fit person and um, you know, the conditions weren't that bad, so I think he was very lucky um, when he was recovered. 22-year-old Matthew Bryce drifted out to sea while attempting to surf along the west coast of Scotland. The Coast Guards based in Belfast are being called heroes for their coordination efforts. We had a, a assistance from three different lifeboats. The, the Coast Guard Rescue um, Helicopter 999 uh, was up in the air and there was five Coast Guard Rescue teams on the shoreline searching for other uh, information which would have helped us. Finally, winched to safety and taken to Belfast Hospital, rescuers say he's extremely lucky only to be suffering from hypothermia. Annie Puller, QUT News. The Canterbury Bulldogs come under fire for letting star player Josh Reynolds leave the club. Reynolds will net $3 million moving to West Tigers next year. Kangaroo forward David Clemmer has spoken out about his disappointment with the Doggies after they allowed Reynolds to sign with Wests. We'll lose one of the greatest Bulldogs, you know, up with Terry Lamb, Steve Mortimer, and so I hope the club have made the right decision. In AFL, the Fremantle Dockers are confident they'll re-sign Nat Fife when his contract ends later this year. There have been rumours the Brownlow medalist would move to St Kilda for the 2018 season. He's fully committed, he's with us, um, possession's nine-tenths of the law, and he's our captain. So we love him, he loves Perth, he loves his family, so I, I would think the odds are in our favour. And Sydney FC's Alex Wilkinson is looking to grab his first A-League championship in his 16-year career. His best chance comes Sunday afternoon against three-time champions Melbourne Victory. It's definitely something I'd like to tick off and 
I think this is the best chance to do it for sure after the season we've had. So, um, you know, come Sunday, hopefully I can tick that one off. Sydney's favourite having won all their matches against the victory this season. Dion Savage, QUT News. A Japanese man has set a new world record for the continuous longest wheelie. Masaru Abe spent more than, wait for it, 13 hours riding his motorcycle on one wheel. He covered more than 500 kilometres and beat the previous record by almost 170 k's. Can you believe that? There's some talented people out there. Emma Francis has the weather details next. And the panda showing he's quite the acrobat. Hello, time to take a look at the weather. It's been blue skies across most of Brisbane today, a max temperature of 27. On the gold and sunny coasts, we saw mercury hitting 25 degrees. Ipswich, mostly fine with a top of 26. Around the nation Thursday, it might be time to pull out those winter woolies. Canberra drops to an overnight low of zero, a top of 17 in Melbourne and Hobart, and eight to 18 in Adelaide. The forecast for Queensland, and we can expect cloudy conditions across most of the state. Cairns could see a shower or two. 26, the high in Bundy. Mount Isa and Longreach can expect highs of 31. Townsville, a top of 28. On Moreton Bay, winds will be 15 to 20 knot southeasterlies, with seas to about one metre. And the sun will set at 514. The outlook for the gold and sunny coasts, Cloudy, some early showers and a top of 24 in both regions. Looking ahead for Brisbane, top of 24 for Thursday, expect showers on Friday and Saturday cloudy with a top of 25. That's the weather for now. Back to you, Dominic. Thanks, Emma. Pandas are known as one of the most playful and fun-loving creatures in the world. But who knew they were so nimble? One Chinese panda has put on a skillful acrobatic display. Grass padding and a slight hill. It seems that's all it takes for a panda to go rolling. In a new video from a breeding centre in China's Sichuan province, a cub grabs its legs and quickly turns itself into a fluffy black and white ball, showing off its skills to a live audience. With a remarkable degree of flexibility, the bear manages eight consecutive rolls before taking a rest on its back. Shortly after, zookeepers take it away for a dip in a bath pit. But staying clean is clearly not on the young panda's agenda, leaving another panda cub to take control. Annie Puller, QUT News. That brings you up to date with QUT News. Goodbye for now. And we'll close with a ring and roo that took on the GGs at a race meeting in country New South Wales. Enjoy. Enjoy.